right, here it is off the mill. Got a nice deep dish to it, measured it. We're pretty close on target. Maybe just a hair shallow for a 16 inch F 3.5 slumping mold. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got some, the, the surface is a little rough. I need to get the speeds and feeds figured out a little bit better. I think maybe I had the rotation on the table going a little too fast out near the edge because it's much smoother near the center. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover it with a very thin skim coat of Durham's, uh, Durham's water putty here. I'm going to mix it up really, really sloppy and just spread it around with a, with a little rubber spatula. And uh, then I'll come back and give it a light sanding. I don't really want to change the shape too much with the sanding. I just want to sand it back down to the wood surface. Then uh, all the little holes and, and irregularities should be filled in and it should be a lot smoother then. We'll see how it looks after that. There, I got a really light skim coat of water putty on it. So light it's actually starting to dry already. And uh, what I'll do is I'll wait for that to dry thoroughly, then give it a very light sanding and see what the surface looks like then. I don't, like I said, I don't want to change the shape too much, but I want it to be a little smoother before I seal it. Okay, so I've got this wooden disc. I cut it out on my rotary turntable on my CNC mill. It's got a nice dish to it. It's the curvature I wanted. Now, finishing the surface, it's not as smooth as I'd like. The grain is kind of raised. It's got a couple coats of polyurethane on it, and I'm just really not thrilled with the surface. I mean, for a slumping mold, it probably doesn't matter. But I'm doing an experiment here. I want to see if I can make it better. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some self-leveling um, bar top coating on it, about an eighth of an inch thick. And I'm going to do it while the disc is spinning at the speed necessary to create the curve I want. So this is an experiment. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but uh, I used a stopwatch and I timed this and I've got my variable speed controller here. I've got the turntable turning at just the speed I want it turning. It should, centrifugal force, should make the self-leveling epoxy coating form um, a par parabola of the curve I want. That's not terribly important for a slumping mold, but that it's a parabola, but it needs to be the curve I want. And I'm hoping that a lot of these irregularities will go away because they'll be under a thick layer of the epoxy. It's an experiment. We'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work, I won't do it next time. Anyway, uh, let me get the epoxy mixed up and we'll see how it works. Okay. Let me get the, the spinning. bubbles in it. I'll deal with that later. spreading out as smoothly as I'd hoped it would. It is spreading. all the way to the edge here. Alright. Hopefully now it will level out before it hardens up. Deal with 
with the bubbles. Yeah, it seems like it's trying to level out. That's nice. bubbles but after about 15 minutes so I'll just let it continue to uh, sit and spin and see if it levels out better it's definitely leveling good hopefully it's taken on the curve I want once it gets hard I can measure it with my sagittometer Anyway, I won't make you watch this whole process. It's probably going to be 15, 20 minutes before anything interesting happens. Alright, looking at this, the reflection of the sky off of it, it looks like it has leveled out really nicely from the center to the edge. So I think it's time to try and do something about some of the air bubbles. Oh yeah, that gets rid of them real quick. Nice. Oh, that's beautiful. I got rid of most of them. That's a gorgeous surface right there. mirror. That's beautiful. Now I just need it to harden up. Alright, the problem with doing this outdoors on a windy day is I've got debris and bugs landing on the uh, sticky resin. So I put a, a thin sheet of plywood over the top of it just to keep crap from uh, landing on it. Hopefully the, the plywood won't blow away when we get a bad gust. Anyway, it's, I can't see what's going on underneath there anymore, but uh, it's it's going to be a while before it hardens up. The little bit that's left in the uh, in the mixing containers is still pretty pretty sloppy, so I'm sure that what's in there is still pretty sloppy too. So I'll just uh, let it keep spinning and waiting, and uh, see what happens. All right, it's been a few hours. The stuff in the uh, mixing cup has hardened up quite a bit. It's still sticky as all get out, but it doesn't seem like it flows anymore. So, let me pull this off. Look how shiny that is. That is just gorgeous. It's like a mirror. It's amazing. So, I don't think that it's going to flow if I turn the turntable off at this point. So I think I can uh, shut it down. It's been running an awful long time. I actually hooked a, a DC power supply up because I was running off a battery to begin with and I was afraid the battery might run down and the turntable would slow down and stop before the, the stuff set up. But uh, it, it looks like it's well on its way to being set up. Like I said, it's still very sticky, so I think... I will cover it back up while I'm waiting for it to uh, get good and set up. And 
it's still windy so i put a little weight on it to keep the wind from blowing the piece of plywood off hopefully tomorrow it will be set up well enough that it's not so sticky and tacky that i can actually measure the radius on it um, i would i would really love to know what the radius of curvature this thing has if i got the 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 rotation at the right rate and everything worked out good um, so we'll find out tomorrow or maybe the next day when it's not tacky and I'll show you that all right it's the next day and this is no longer tacky um, so I'm trying to measure uh, the Sagitta I've got here, and I whipped up a quick and dirty Sagitta meter because I don't have one to measure a curve this big, or a disc this big. So I whipped up something quick and dirty, and it's probably not super accurate because I don't have a surface plate for it either, or a, or a big piece of flat glass to, uh, to uh, zero it out on. I'm just using a big slab of aluminum here, so it's probably not super accurate. It's saying, though, I've got almost exactly six millimeters of curve in it. And that's, that's a lot more than what I was aiming for. Now, there is a bit of a meniscus over here, which could be throwing things off. I tried to carve down the edges and get past the meniscus where the, uh, where the uh, resin climbed up the dam at the edge a little bit but I don't think I got rid of all of it so that's probably throwing me off a lot I don't really think that I've got a curve that deep let me uh, let me try something else all right trying it with my smaller sagittometer which is only 13 and 7 eighths wide I'm getting about 4.3 4.36 millimeters. Still, that's more than I was expecting. I may have had the RPMs too high. Let me do a little calculation and see what this comes out to for something that's 16 and a quarter in diameter. All right, so I was wrong. I don't have more curve than I wanted. I have less. I was having a bit of a mental breakdown there, converting the uh, metric measurement coming from my sagittometer here into the uh, inches input that my uh, curve calculator wants. So I actually have less curve here than I want. So this is actually about a F4.3 mold rather than a F3.5, which is what I was aiming for. So maybe, for some reason, I didn't have the uh, turntable spinning fast enough. I don't know. It, uh, I timed it several times, and maybe the, maybe the calculation was wrong, but uh, I timed it several times, and it should have been spinning at the rate needed to make an F3.5. But... Uh, and I, I double checked the measurement with the, with the big quick and dirty sagittometer I made too, and it comes out to be the same. It's f it's f four point three. So, it's a beautiful f four point three. It's not what I wanted, but it's a beautiful f four point three. So it it the process works. The process works. It just needs a little tweaking. This is just an incredibly smooth um, master mold here. And you know, if I could turn off, uh, turn out lots of uh, plaster working molds from this for slumping uh, blanks in the kiln, I could I could easily do that with this. Just wax it up a little bit, build a nice big dam around it, pour some um, some refractory plaster in it, and and make working molds. Uh, unfortunately, I was aiming for something a little faster, so I'll keep this one on the shelf. And, and maybe there'll be a call for an F4.3-ish mirror in the future, but I think I'm going to have to start over again and see if I can make one that's closer to F3.5, which is what I really wanted. But uh, the process does work, and it works pretty darn well. I just, like I said, it just needs a little tweaking. So I hope uh, you found this video interesting, entertaining, educational, and uh, thanks for watching, everybody.